bad movies has a certain aura around them. They have a certain feel, like a good feel for us, for us moviegoers. We sometimes love a bad movie. We love to invite friends and family, just get some beers, whatever, some cookies, and just laugh out loud out of the badness. Especially if the badness is sincere, if the badness is unique, if the movie is bad in a beautiful, positive way. That's why, no matter how many movies fall on their asses trying to be good, we are still gonna watch them. I have like a huge collection of bad movies, which I come back every single year, and I would not change it for the world. Watching bad movies is such a pleasure for me. But not every bad movie is a good bad movie. And the worst type of bad movie is such a bad movie that you just cannot stand, that you cannot joke about, that you just cannot live through it, that you just cannot stand sitting in your chair and waiting for it to be over. Because you see, there is no sincerity there. There is no honesty there. There is no trying by, you know, an incompetent artist, but still trying. No, there is just a ruler and a list of scenes that they just need to check and just, okay, let's just put it out there. We don't really care. This is the case with Madame Webb, the Sony... Spider-Verse weird universe that is slowly but surely trying to kill our hype for any superhero movies. But why is it so bad? I think that's a whole different conversation. That man's trying to kill you. What? Who are you? What is going on? I can see the future. I'm truly confounded by the Madame Web idea, or the movie idea that we heard about last year. That, okay, we need to expand the universe, we will bring spider-like characters from this real Spider-Man universe, and we'll try to expand the universe until we get Spider-Man, because Disney will let him go? Or maybe until we get a deal that we can get our Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, whoever, back and put him in our universe, so we could have two Spider-Mans, the MCU Spider-Man, and maybe the Sony Spider-Man? I have no idea. Or maybe there is some like little, uh, in the small print, that if you won't make a movie with like a certain number of Spider-Man characters in a, in a year, those characters come back to Marvel. I have no idea. But Madame Webb is much, 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 much worse than Craven the Last Counter or even Morbius. Because Madame Webb, as the name suggests, is a person who kind of manages the spider Verse and kinda needs spider men, spider people to exist. I can understand an argument that Craven the Last Hunter, you can put the action somewhere, I don't know, in the Republic of South Africa or maybe in Russia, because of course he's Russian, and just do an origin story that does not. I uh, use the Spider-Man character, Peter Parker, etc. Yeah, I understand. I understand it, especially for, for him. Less for Morbius, but I understand it for Craven the Last Hunter. This does not apply to Madame Webb. But still, is it possible to tell a story about Madame Webb that is competent? Yes, of course. Of course it is. Do we need many spider people? Not really. Do we need Peter Parker? No. Do we need Ben Parker? No. So what do we have here? We have Ben Parker. Why? Pfft, because. We have the mother of Peter Parker. We have Peter Parker in the belly. He's in the belly. So, <laughs> so he can say, this is a movie with the original Spider-Man because Peter Parker is in the belly. We never call him Peter. Ah, you can, ah, you can see I'm blinking. So, 
It's not official, but it is official. Ah, this is our secret plan. We're bringing Peter Parker to the Sony universe through the belly. Through the belly. Why? I don't know. But the fact that we need like 20 or 30 minutes of this movie to put Ben Parker, to put some either spider women, but they are not spider women. They don't have any powers in the movie makes it even more confusing. The movie is mostly confusing because you watch a trailer and you see three spider women, different versions. And you think, ooh, I might see it in this movie. Nope, you will not see it. You will see it at the beginning in a dream sequence. Ooh. You know, if I dream that I'm like <laughs> 60 pounds all shredded up, that it means that I'm actually 60 pounds all shredded up. Yeah, yeah, that, that how that how word uh, works. What the... And let's, let's not be glib about it. We get a second peek into our free spider women. At the very end of the movie, Madame Webb, she has a vision that lasts not even a minute. And again, we see them in their outfits. So we don't know how will they get their powers? What are those powers? Why are they fighting crime? Why is Madame Webb with them? Are they really fighting crime? Because, like, the minute are they jumping, haha, I'm jumping, haha, I'm jumping. Like, okay, I, I can do that. Like, come on, someone bring me a camera. I will be recording myself jumping up and down. Yay! So, three major characters in this movie. We have no idea how they will turn into superheroes. Why would they? Is there anything connecting to any spider? Anything like that. So, and this this is part, one of, this is like the biggest part of the marketing campaign. Those three little girls or those, those three teenagers. But the other thing is like the Madame Web. So we need to talk about the origin of Madame Web. And when you, you probably saw it because this is so ridiculous that people are just putting five points of the origin story of Madame Web, and it's like, who approved those five points to be in the actual movie? Because you see, being born in a cave, in a lake, in Peru, then in a diff then being transported, we never see it, but you know, you're being born thanks to a special spider who bites your dying mother in the lake. And the spider has healing powers, as you know, most spiders do. And after you're being born, you are being collected by Arachna people, Arachnas, because we try to, we can't use the word spider man, spider women. You, there is no mention. I'm using the word. In, you will not find one single spider man. Marvel will suit. So she's being born in a cave in Peru with. With no women there, there, there are just arachnas, uh, spider men, weird tribal spider men who probably they are dressed in nothing. They are basically just war paint. So probably they do like this. So they take the baby, they go out from the lake, from the cave, from the woods. They go to an airport and they're just, um, can we have two uh, tickets, three tickets, because for the small baby, for this infant, we need to bring uh, her to New York to, uh, to for her to become an orphan, because of course there is no family and her mother, who was here, had like, that was a virgin birth. She never had a boyfriend. She never had her mother or father or uncle or aunt. So, so uh, this little baby needs to come with us, the Arachnas people. Even though she, she was born in Peru, we need to take her to New York and leave her there uh, in an orphanage and never find any family or any step family. That makes sense. So this is the first step of her career. The second step of her origin movie is I need to become a recluse that also hates people, hates society, hates children. But at the same time, everyone around me loves me. You know, you know, those, the, <laughs> the famous trope of a lovable, hmm, despicable person. 
<laughs> there is no even word. He's, she's like lovable, but there is no reason to be lovable. Why do you like her? Because she doesn't like me? Why do you invite her to parties? Because she does not want to be invited? Why do you ask her to be part of your um, wedding shower or like, what is a child, baby shower? Because she doesn't want to take part in it? Maybe like her whole life is like an opposite word. Whatever she says she doesn't like, everyone will say, okay, we will do it. Okay, so the second part, the most unlikable person ever. So she grows up to be the most unlikable person ever. And then she, of course, kind of reaches those powers that she can see the future and becomes a fugitive because it, she has to be a fugitive because the New York police in 2003, so after the 11, uh, the 9-11 terrorist attacks, so you know, after that, uh, the New York police cannot find her anywhere because she's being accused of abducting three girls. Three girls that we already know will be spider women and because someone is trying to hunt them. But there is a misunderstanding, you know, like in a very good rom-com. By the way, I'm talking about Madame Webb and I'm not talking about the Arachna person who is Ezekiel Sims because there is literally nothing to talk about when it comes to Ezekiel Sims. Remember Green Goblin from the Spider-Man movies of Sam Raimi when we had so much depth there. He was a family man. He was a ruthless guy when it comes to his company. He had like, like, he, he was so disappointed in his son and he looked for a son in Peter Parker. There was so much there. Ezekiel Sims in this movie has two lines about, I came from the bottom and now I'm here. Everyone is asking, what is here? What does it mean? And he says, blah, 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 look there, jump, and he's out. And he has a dream. And he needs to kill three girls. And he decides it when he gets a hold of, of a system that can track anyone, anywhere, by just one person. The, the, the system that the Batman from the Dark Knight, when he had those whatever, whatever stuff he had uh, in the Dark Knight, he says, oh, man, pff, that's scientifically improbable <laughs> that is some bullshit sci-fi but he has it five years later and he has it like here uh, five years earlier so and he's not using it to do anything like i even understood if he i'm using this spy technology to get rich nope i'm using it to catch teenagers sexy teenagers doesn't sound creepy at freaking all but let's leave, let's give him. We have the first part being born in Peru, second part being the most unlikable person. The third part would be, of course, I'm suddenly turning. Now I love children because I'm dealing with those three girls and I'm learning. And I'm learning because I stole, <laughs> I stole a New York cup and no one will find it. You know, I didn't even take a second to take the number of the freaking cap down but no one will find me 2003 three man, two white white <laughs> one white one hispanic one black girl missing and no one is doing anything and someone the same person probably stole a, a cab no one in new york two years after 9 11 is doing anything very very probable but after i'm turning from the most unlikable to and Unlikely, but still lovable mother figure. <laughs> yeah, of course. I need to go back to Peru or whatever it is, Venezuela. Because I'm being hunted. Because probably there's an APB for me. Um, there's an APB? I don't know. I, I, I watch so many cop shows in America that I'm in my mind. There is, if you're looking for someone, there's like a... Like a, like a picture of something, it's called APB. If it's not, I'm not checking it. I'm not checking it, you can you, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Uh, so I also stole the uh, the cab, so like the police is looking for me. They have probably a picture of me because there are cameras in the New York subway. But I, a poor person who is working as a paramedic, can get my, my ID, can get my passport, can go there, 
from a New York airport to Peru to meet my Arachnas people and go to the cave so I can go to the lake and learn and learn something, something very original, very original that no one will connect with Spider-Man. Because as you know, in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And here she learns from a weird English-talking Peruvian Arachna person, she learns once you get the responsibility, once you understand your responsibility, a great power will come. And you just like, I think I heard it somewhere. Was it Black Panther? Was it Batman? I don't know. I just like, I can't put my finger on it. But I know that I heard it somewhere. So this is the, her third, third step in her beautiful origin story, right? It all seems so straightforward and so logical. But she comes back and now she can fight Ezekiel who really has no motivation. I, I need to kill the teenagers. Ooh, ooh, uh. And she learns. She learns that she can transform and put her ghost-like bodies in three different places at the same time. But doing so, she does not freeze time or something like that. So it all happens while she, her, in her main body, is standing in front of Easy Seems, the worst villain in the universe. And he just stands like, ha ha, I got you now. And she goes, wait. We get three different Madame Webs who help our spider, not spider girls, because they are not spider girls. They don't have much of an identity. They are just dressed so we, the men, can look at them and say, ooh, sexy. That's basically it. And then, as you can see, she says, okay, if you're saying wait, I'm wait. Dum, 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 dum. She uses those weird powers to help them not fall and not die. And then he says, okay, are you ready? And she's like, okay, now you can hit me. Boom, I hit you and not, for example, caught you with my special poisony hands. And if I caught you, I could have killed you. But I don't want to do it because it's like the end of the movie. And I know I'm about to die, crushed by a very, very big and very smart marketing campaign. Crushed by a big Pepsi sign. Now, I got I to gotta say, Pepsi marketing department, good job. Everyone will want to drink more Pepsi because of Pepsi is the killer of Ezekiel Sims and other spider villains. If you don't want to get crushed by, by it, you need to become more of a spider man than a spider villain. Haha, <laughs> whatever that means. I'm talking to you about a movie, even though I don't think a review is something that you can write about this movie. Because the, how many times can you repeat? Doesn't make sense. They don't care. They don't care about the outcome. It looks like they didn't even do any storyboards. There are no, sp in my opinion, there were never any storyboards for that movie. And they were just, okay, are you standing here? Okay, let's, let's roll it. Move here. Okay, we'll fix it in post. Like, <laughs> probably the biggest, <laughs> the most common sentence said on the, said on the Madame Web. A movie was, we'll fix it in post. And no one ever cared about it because no one planned to fix anything in post. This is not a fun movie to watch. If you had fun listening to me or to other people talking about it, maybe, maybe this, maybe it's true. You, you had lots of, lots of fun. But believe me, there is no fun in digesting this undigestible piece of crap. There are so many bad movies that try and fail. I'm a big fan of Amazing Spider-Man Part 2, which is a terrible movie. But there are so many good little pieces there, or, or pieces that are actually trying. I love Paul Giamatti as Ryan. Right. I love him. I would just watch a whole movie of his Russian accent and spitting <laughs> while, he's, while he's trying to act. This is so beautiful. There are so many these types of scenes that are really... Funny, 
And they are funny because they're trying to put like three or four movies into one movie, but they're trying. Here, there, here, there are like students of Master Yoda because I would say to the whole crew of Madame Web, there is no try. Do or do not. There is no try. There is no trying to make a good movie. There is just we're pushing it out and basically forget about it. Forget about it. Maybe. Madame Web and those three spider characters are now part of the Sony Spider-Verse, so they don't need to care that Marvel will break them and, and steal them from that. <laughs> Whatever it means. I have no idea. I have really no idea. But I gotta say that <sighs> this movie almost broke me as a reviewer, as a movie critic, as a fan. And I'm telling you this as a person who loved Morbius, not as a good movie. But loved the way they tried to do million things and the way Jared Leto's ego was like well it was like a big eagle over everything. Like his <laughs> shadow was overwhelming and everyone had to do what Jared Leto wanted. You can see like his his paws or his fingerprints on everything, on every scene and it's so lovely it's so lovely that it's ridiculous the matt smith dancing scene the matt smith deciding uh i never had a chance to have sex with beautiful women but i prefer to jump at the boys and suck on them <laughs> jesus christ there is so much fun in that movie here there's there's no like like, like morbius came and sucked all life out of the movie the movie is lifeless Tryless and lifeless. And that's probably the best summary that you will ever get. Madame Webb, the most lifeless, tryless product that you will ever see. <sighs> I'm looking for that one person who had fun watching Madame Webb, or maybe even will say that it's a good movie. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm doing this review while I'm uh, holding as my emotional support animal Venom from Spider-Man 3 of Sam Raimi. So he's my emotional support animal trying to uh, keep me together. So please leave a comment if you would like more of this. Join us. So join our cinematic universe, cinematic Julianism, and let's go on another journey into the void. Because we were not in space this time. We were in the void of cinematic blunders, of cinematic blandness. So join us, join cinematic Julianism. My name is Julian, and we'll see each other next time. Hopefully, I will be more optimistic and I will be talking about something much, much, much more positive. Bye-bye.